Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video on this thing here. This little stack of boards can put an on-screen display onto your DJI HD goggles. Now I love little projects like this, little Arduino on the top doing something cool. Now a while ago, those of you that watch the channel a lot will remember this thing. This was a little head tracker. Uh, again, little Arduino with some very clever code written by a very smart chap that then published it and allowed us to use it for free. I've built a couple of these. This is actually designed to go on the side of DJI goggles. But this is the latest project that I've got in that I'm playing with here. Now, a big thank you to the designer, David, who's figured all this out. He also makes the board that sits at the back of this that makes it all work. Now, the common question I know I'm going to get is, well, why don't you just use a flight controller? Because flight controllers will give you that on-screen display, and it's a great question. But however, not everyone wants a flight controller. Some people don't want the hassle. Some people think that flight controllers are one step too far. Some people are putting DJI equipment into other things apart from quads and planes. And in those instances, they want some basic information, GPS location, altitude, speed, those kind of things without having to go to the trouble of learning how to set up something like iNav or Betaflight. This is relatively plug and play. However, it does come as separate components that you have to do a little bit of soldering and you also have to flash the code on it as well. So if you are somebody that doesn't feel comfortable with that, at the moment with this version one of the product, that probably isn't going to float your boat. However, if you are a DJI pilot and you don't want to put a flight controller in whatever it is you have the DJI system in and you want some OSD goodness, this is a cute way to do it. Now the kits don't come with a full GPS, so you will have to buy a BNP220 uh, GPS or similar. I've been using some of these older TBS ones that I've had in here. Having the GPS in there will also give you additional information because by default the kit does have a barometer which is going to be useful for things like height. And of course, as well as the kit and a GPS, then you are also going to need your GGI system. Now, this will run off a flight pack from 7.4 to 17 volts. That's 234S, really. It'll give you per cell voltage. It'll actually power the DJI Air unit directly from this as well. It'll give you altitude, the GPS, latitude, longitude, a home arrow, believe it or not, ground speed, and distance from home by default. In the kit, you get the Q-Lite OSD version 1 main board, which is what everything connects to, a Wemos D1 Mini, microcontroller, one 30K resistor, one 7.5K resistor, one Mini 360 voltage step-down unit that needs to step down between 5.5 and 6 volts, and a BMP280 board. That is the one that's the barometer. Then some header pins, and also in my kit, I got a momentary button with a couple of bits of wire. Now there are build videos around for this, but let me very quickly show you how I've put it together. Again, links down below to all of the resources for this. So in terms of putting it together, it's pretty straightforward. First of all, solder in the two resistors, the 30 and the 7.5K resistor. It's written very clearly on the main board, which goes where. Then use four separate header pins to connect in the Mini 360 power board. Make sure that you're matching the arrows. And then once that is done, pop on a couple of power leads make sure you've got the positive and negative the right way around. Once you've done that, then pop a voltmeter onto the output pins on the top right hand corner and twist the little screw so that you get between 5.5 and 6.0 volts. Important to do this before you go any farther so all the voltages are right on the board. The adjustment screw is incredibly sensitive, so take your time with this. So long as you get it between 5.5 and 6 volts, you'll be good. Next step then is to install the BMP280. Line up the pins on both boards and use one of the risers to connect the VCC, ground, SDL and SDA connections and solder in place with the longer pins out the back and just clip them off. Then we need to add the Arduino. So I plugged the pins into the sockets and lined the main board up, used a little bit of something called blue tack, the kind of thing that holds posters and paper onto your walls to hold everything in place while I soldered it all together. 
And then I've installed the final pieces, putting in the other risers into the D5, D6 and other outputs ready to go. I'd also recommend installing the optional momentary button that goes at the bottom. Sadly, this isn't something that has separate ports on it. Maybe in a future version it will. You have to flip the board over and solder the two connections from one side of the button to D3 and ground. And when you press it, and hold it provides a short that puts the whole thing into Wi-Fi mode because as well as creating on-screen display it also creates log files and those can be downloaded over Wi-Fi and viewed in things like Google Earth. Next thing we need to do then is load the firmware. Again links down to all of this pretty easy if you haven't already installed the CH340 driver, then it needs to be on the PC. You install that at step one. Again, link below. I've had it on my laptop I'm using here for a long time. I think it's the same driver I'm using for my laser cutter. I then downloaded the sketch from GitHub and also downloaded something called Pi Flasher. And then opened Pi Flasher, plugged in the board, and then selected the bin file. There are two. There's one with and without a GPS. If you're going to do this, I'd recommend popping a GPS on there as well so you get things like your latitude and longitude and your speed and then hit upload and away it goes. Once it's done that, unplug it from the computer and it's pretty ready to rock and roll. In terms of connecting it to your DJI goggles, then there are three pins on the side which are marked as ground voltage and transmit and it's got DJI written above it. You'll need a servo cable that's going to connect to your DJI goggles to the ground and plus and also to the receive pin on your DJI goggles and then once you power everything up it, you should start to see after a moment's delay the on-screen display inside your DJI goggles. Of course make sure that you have custom OSD turned on in the menus on the goggles for it to appear and we have the at the moment the GPS hasn't got a lock latitude and longitude in the lower left hand side we have a cross in the middle this is the default layout now i did also test this with walk snail here sadly it didn't work with walk snail i've fed that back to david and i will be testing that so as soon as there's a walk snail capable version as well that'll be available might need also some tweaks with the code but i'll liaise with walk snail as well this should work with standard beta flight msp telemetry i did change the osd type in the walk snail goggles to be beta flight but that didn't fix it either you can also change the layout and that is available you can edit the files to create the bin file that goes on the arduino to move things around so for example i'm making one of these for a friend of mine who has a big glider with a dji system in it he doesn't want a flight controller so i'm going to give him the two things that he's asking for he's always wanted a height and speed readout in his osd so i'm going to possibly make a follow-up video where i show you how to do that if you want to move things around in summary, I love things like this, as I said at the beginning. Smart people solving a problem and sharing the results with the community. Now, these kits are available to buy from Etsy. I'll put a link down below. You get everything that I've showed. Again, the only thing extra you have to get if you want to is add the GPS, and I would recommend that you do that. But this is a clearly a V1 product. It's reasonably large, and I think with a bit of work, David, as he continues to improve this, a smaller board with integrated push button for the Wi-Fi and uh, neater stacking would be fantastic. Things like a graphical app to change and adjust the layout, and also things like the onboard BMP and battery illuminated circuit built into the board rather than separate daughter boards would really shrink everything down. But I love the fact that David is sharing this kind of stuff and it's available for us that don't want to fly with a flight controller. But if you like projects like this, Onus Multimeter can do a bit of basic soldering and have HD DJI FPV stuff and don't mind spending 10 minutes putting it together and flashing it. This is a cool way to add an OSD to your system without having to use a full flight controller. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.